Thank you, Mr. Forrest. Corey Friedman has your next question. Thank you, Kelly. Mr. Forrest, North Carolina's two online charter schools received D grades overall and F grades in math under the academic report cards released two weeks ago by the State Department of Public Instruction. The company that operates one of those schools agreed in July to a $168 million settlement with the state of California for deceiving parents and altering attendance records. If virtual charter schools are an experiment in education, when are you going to make a determination on whether or not that experiment is working? Uh, well, uh, you know, virtual charters are just another choice option out there. We created a, a pilot program for two virtual charters. That's what the legislation said. Two virtual charters to come in and allow parents an opportunity for choice. Uh, so there's a variety of reasons why a parent might choose a, an online virtual charter. It could be that their child is participating in some kind of sport that they need, like swimming, that they needed that opportunity to do that. It could be that the, they are disabled in some way and they need to be taken care of in the home. There's a variety of reasons. There are probably uh, 20 different reasons that have been stated. Uh, there's a waiting list for online virtual charters out there still, and uh, the parents and the teachers actually love it. There's a you know uh, have they have they made A grades? Well, we could kind of go through the whole list of D schools in North Carolina. I guess the question I could return to you and say, when are we willing to shut down all the D and F schools in North Carolina? How many years are we going to wait? I don't think there's an excuse to be had for any failing school in the state of North Carolina. But we have schools in our state that have been failing for decades. Uh, that's why we created the Achievement School District in North Carolina, so we could eliminate that. But we created this uh, pilot program because it's something that's innovative. It, it does work in places uh, around the country. And so uh, that example that you gave in California has absolutely nothing to do with the state of North Carolina, other than that's the company. The, the legislation said two companies. Those are the two companies that applied. Those are the two companies that became uh, online charters. And this, again choice and opportunity and education for parents allow parents to make the decision the government should not be the decision maker for a child's opportunity and a child's future Ms. Coleman, two minutes to you. i would say that north carolina cannot afford to fund four different public school systems it is just unreasonable to think that any of these schools are going to be successful when they are all funded through taxpayer dollars. You have our traditional public schools, our charter schools, our voucher program or opportunity scholarships, and now the Achievement School District, all funded out of public dollars. And so we're siphoning off monies from the public school system. You know, when I was in the General Assembly, we had a cap on charter schools. There could only be 100 charter schools, but these charter schools were supposed to, because they didn't have, they didn't have uh, regulations or accountability, they were supposed to be, uh, have best practices. And these best practices were, be to were to be transferred to the traditional public schools. That has not happened. We've got to have, if we're going to have the charter school, we have to have some accountability and some regulations. We do not need to fund four separate public school systems and think that any of them are going to be high performing successful schools. That is not going to happen because what all of this is leading to is privatization of our public school system. And that goes against the Constitution of North Carolina that says every child is guaranteed the right to a basic and sound education. Mr. Forrest, one minute. Uh, public schools are, uh, our charter schools are public schools and they're, they are very accountable. In fact, you know what happens with a charter school that fails in North Carolina? We can shut it down. You know what happens with a traditional public school that fails in North Carolina? You could throw more money at it. That's what's been happening for decades. And do you know that uh, in charter schools in North Carolina, listen, I'm agnostic on this. I, I'm in favor of traditional public, charter, public, all of the above. But listen, Charter schools, public charter schools in North Carolina outperform traditional public schools in every single demographic category except gifted and talented. That tells you something. That tells you that parents are making this choice. There's a lottery system. They don't get to pick their students. The parents get to choose the education. They have waiting lines for them. We lifted the cap on charters because parents asked for it. They wanted that choice in education. I can tell you that just a few months ago, the Lieutenant Governor had a report pulled from the State Board of Education because it showed charter schools in a bad light and he made them go back and rewrite the report to show a more, a more positive uh, response for charter schools. 
If charter schools, they are what they are, in, in the name of transparency, we should have the report given out as it was written with no edits made to it to make it appear to be something that it was not.